So we're going to hop into our notes. So why don't you guys go to our unit circle that we've been working on. And again, this is inside of our, or my 49491 folder, which I think some of you have labeled the same way. But we have all of this information. And we use that on the Kahoot to practice and find these trig values, which we just did. And you guys seem to really be getting the hang of that. Now, yesterday or in our last class, we then talked about, you know, the relation between converting from degrees to radians. And so we had a process in doing that, changing things from degrees to radians by multiplying by 180 over pi. And then we also went the other way with it from radians to degrees by multiplying by Oop, 180 over pi. I said those two backwards, didn't I? Yeah, degrees to radians, sorry. I said one is pi over 180, not 180 over pi. And then vice versa uh, for radians to degrees. All right. And the reason we did that is because we now want to fill in our unit circle all of the radian measures. However, I just wanted to show you guys this process but we're going to use what I think is an easier process and how I really think you guys should think about them in finding the other angles in radian measure. So we did figure out that a full circle is two pi. Okay, so if we did 360 degrees, okay, times uh, pi over 180, we got two pi. So we figured that out in our last class. And if two pi is a full circle, one pi is half a circle, okay? So it's two pi radians. You guys remember when we said a radian was really like the length of the radius around the outside of the circle? Well, this is a little side note for you, but if you make your geometry teacher proud right now and you remember the formula for circumference of a circle, it's two pi r. It's two times pi times the length of the radius well, if the length of the radius is the same as the length of a radian, we have two pi r there. So two pi is not just this random thing. I mean, it, it does come from some geometry that you guys know. All right, well, we also found these reference angles, but if you think about, if, if we just know that this is two pi, let's do a little fractions. Let's go back to you know elementary school. Half of two pi is one pi, we already have that. Half of one pi would be pi over two. That's at 90 degrees. So I'm not gonna do the whole converting. I know that that's gotta be pi over two or one half pi. Half of half is a fourth. That's right here. At 45 degrees, that is pi over four. It's one fourth of a pi. Okay, so you know, and likewise, I guess in the, in the second quadrant, this would be three fourths of a pi because it's three fourths of the way to one pi. So that is three pi over four. And so if you look at that, you know, starting here, and that pi over four is your reference, that's like one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four, because four over four is one. So that's five pi over four, six pi over four, seven pi over four, and eight pi over four, and eight over four is two pi. So, you know, just by counting in those fractions, we can find all of those other measurements. So, this was four pi over four, so down here is five pi over four. And down here is six pi over four. But this is math class, so I should write six pi over four as three pi over two, right? I mean, we should write that as a reduced fraction. And well, three pi over two is 270 degrees. That was one that we found last week. In fact, it's one and a half pi. And then we have seven pi over four. 
And then finally, 2 pi is 8 pi over 4. So just by knowing this, again, one reference angle, we could find the rest of them. Like if I wanted to know what is down here, well, I know that that's pi, which is 4 over 4, plus another pi, plus another pi over 4. Whoops. 4 over 4 plus 1 over 4 would be 5 pi over 4. All right, any questions on those yet? You get the idea with the fractions? Because the other ones work the same way. So 30 degrees was pi over 6. Now, we did that algebraically before, but, you know, think about that. It's, you know, 1... 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5, 6, 6, 6. It's one sixth of the way to pi or to 180 degrees. So that is pi over 6. Or you could think of it as one third of the way to here. So if we have, if this is 1 over 6, this is 2 over 6. And 2 over 6, of course, is pi over 3. So I now have the first quadrant. And that's, you know, really what I want to become very familiar with. But we'll fill the rest of them in. And we could do that by adding or subtracting fractions or by counting by sixths. So if I wanted to find this one, I could do like pi minus pi over 6. So 6 over 6 minus pi over 6 would be 5 pi over 6. Or to find this one here, I could do pi minus pi over 3. So I think a pi is 3 over 3 minus pi over 3 is 2 pi over 3. If I wanted to go pi plus pi over 6, that's going to be 7 pi over 6 down here in the third quadrant. And staying in the third quadrant, if I went pi plus pi over 3, that's 3 over 3 plus another pi over 3 would be 4 pi over 3. And of course, I could do that, you know, times pi over 180 thing, but I think just adding or subtracting these fractions is a little bit easier. If I want to find this, I could do 2 pi minus pi over 6. Well, 2 pi is 12 over 6, minus 1 over 6 would be 11 pi over 6. And I think we're missing this guy right here. So that we could find by doing 2 pi minus pi over 3. So 2 pi in thirds would be 6 over 3 minus 1 over 3 would be 5 pi over 3. So hopefully you're thanking your elementary math school teacher right now for teaching you how to add and subtract fractions so well. All right, so the ultimate goal, as we said in our last class, is that now we want to evaluate these trig functions. It's a V. So evaluate trig functions but these are now going to be in radians. So we want to find the sine 
of pi over 3. Well, to find the sine of pi over 3, we need to be very well versed with our first quadrant. So I'm going to just blow that up so you can't even see anything else. And so the dice said pi over 3, right? Okay, so the sine of pi over three is here. The sine is the y value would be root three over two. So the sine of pi over three is root three over two. In fact, man, that's gonna get annoying flipping up and down so much. So I'm just gonna quickly do this. And this would be something that you guys, I think should get in the habit of practicing. I'm going to quickly make the first quadrant right here. I'm going to put three notches. This is pi over six. This is pi over four. And this is pi over three. Those are my three reference angles. And if I could remember the coordinates, this is one half. This is root three over two. This is root two over two. This is root two over two. And this is root three over two, one half. So I'll give you a second to write that down. Because the more you write it down over and over again, I think the more likely it is you're gonna remember that off the cuff. And in remembering those, um, students do very well typically with the pi over four and uh, root two over two and root two over two. These two are often screwed up. And the problem is if you flip flop those and you screw them up, it messes everything up, right? Because if I get one of those wrong, I typically get the other one wrong. And now I have all six trig functions wrong for all those angles and, their, and any other angle that uses those as reference angles. So it's really important to get them correct. So here is one little device that some students help them remember is it kind of looks a little bit like a clock and it is as easy as one, two, three. So if you remember like the first number in each fraction that's written down, like the upper left of each fraction, it goes one, two, three. If you can remember that the other numbers perhaps will fall into place for you. All right, next example, we want to find the sine of 4 pi over 3. Now, I'm not going to look at the unit circle. It's the whole reason I wrote this over here. Thought process is 4 pi over 3 is in the third quadrant because it's more than halfway, which is pi, because it's like 1 and a third. My rep is so it's down here in the third quadrant somewhere. My reference angle is pi over three. The sine is the y value. But since it's down here in the third quadrant, the y value is negative. So the answer will be negative root three over two. All right, please let me know if you think I'm going too fast or you have any questions. All right, so let's find the tangent of seven pi over four. Well, that over four is a huge hint. That means pi over four is gonna be my reference angle. However, seven pi over four is just smaller than eight over four, which is two pi. So it's less than two pi, which puts it down here in the fourth quadrant. So I know my reference angle is pi over four. I know I'm in the fourth quadrant. I know tangent will be sine over cosine. And in the fourth quadrant, the sine is negative. 
because that's the Y. The cosine is positive because that's the X. And so if I have a negative root two over two divided by root two over two, I get negative one. So the sine of seven pi over four is negative one. Guys hanging in there? All right. How about the cosecant of seven pi over six? Cosecant is the sine flipped over. So I have to find the sine of seven pi over six and then I'll flip it over. Seven pi over six would be in the third quadrant because it's a little bit more than six over six, which would be one pi. My reference angle is pi over six because it's six over six plus pi over six would be seven pi over six. Remember, I got to find the sine and then flip it over. The sine is the y value, which is one half. But since it's in the third quadrant, it's negative one half. And if I flip that over, I get negative two. So the cosecant of seven pi over six is negative two. So this, you know, writing this thing is probably a really good idea to you just have that maybe on a piece of scratch paper or we're gonna do a class kick in just a minute for you to write that as soon as you start doing a class kick, write that first quadrant. And remember when you do that, that it's as easy as one, two, three, getting those correct. Cause we gotta get those correct or else we're gonna screw up a whole bunch of answers. All right, does anybody have any questions for me before I let you guys do a class kick? We're okay. All right, so in the class kick, as I suggested, the very first thing, I think it's definitely worth your time is to just write down that first quadrant, okay? And just check to make sure you went one, two, three, so that we know that the order is correct for those. And we're ready to roll here. So the sine of pi over four, I know that pi over four is my reference angle. It's in the first quadrant. The sine is the y value. So it's root two over two. So the sine of pi over four is root two over two. The cosine of five pi over six. Well, five pi over six is less than six over six. So that puts it in the second quadrant. Pi over six is my reference angle because it's pi over six less than that. Cosine is the X value, so it's the X value in the second quadrant. So it will be negative root three over two. All right, the tangent of three pi over four, three pi over four is also in the second quadrant, less than four over four. So pi over four is my reference angle. Tangent is sine over cosine, but one of them will be negative because in the second quadrant, X is negative and Y is positive. Therefore, the tangent of three pi over four is negative one. And then the sine of 11 pi over six, which is less than 12 over six, which would be two pi, 12 over six, or two, uh, it's less than two pi, which puts it in the fourth quadrant. Pi over six is my reference angle. Sine is the Y value, but in the fourth quadrant, it's negative. So it will be negative one half. So the sine of 11 pi over six is negative one half. All right, any questions on any four of those? Good. All right, I'm gonna keep rolling then. So on the second page, and this is why I'm gonna go back first, but I love 
technology. Can I copy and paste this thing here? Well, you know what? Maybe I could use the practice because I really want to get good at that first quadrant. So in that first quadrant, I know that my three angles are pi over six, pi over four, and pi over three. And I know that my coordinates go one, two, three. So that's one half and root three over two, and that's root two over two and root two over two, and root three over two and one half. So if I want to find the cosecant of 11 pi over 6, I'm in the fourth quadrant again. Cosecant is the sine flipped over. Well, the sine would be 1 half, but negative because it's in the fourth quadrant. So negative 1 half flipped over is negative 2. Now for the secant of five pi over six, second quadrant, reference angle is pi over six. Secant is the cosine flipped over. So it's gonna be root three over two flipped over and negative because it's in the second quadrant. So that's gonna be negative two over root three which of course I'm gonna rationalize. So that is negative two root three over three. All right, and last but not least, the cotangent of pi over three. All right, well, the tangent, so I could find the tangent and flip it over. Remember, tangent is sine over cosine. Well, instead of flipping over the tangent, I'm just going to do cosine over sine because that's kind of the same thing, right? So one half over root three over two. And I need to simplify this. So a little shortcut, if I took the bottom and flipped it over, my twos are going to cancel. And I have one over root three. Which I have to rationalize. And then ultimately gives me root three over three. All right, any questions on those guys?